Hello there, Dan Calloway again, coming at you, and I want to talk about uh, secure shell connection in Linux today. Uh, I'm on my KDE Neon 5.12.0 Linux machine, and I'm going to fire up the terminal here in a moment. And today I'm going to demonstrate uh, basically the creation of a public and private key pair to make the connection in Linux to using the sh secure shell protocol from a local machine to a remote server rather than using password. Uh, and the purpose of that, or the reason for that really, is is, is this. Um, a typical user, um, it's not a problem if you're familiar with SSH at all, you know, making that connection using the SSH protocol uh, to a um, user account on the remote server that you know the password for. Because when you make that connection, it's going to prompt you for that password and you'll make the connection and then your traffic to and from that server will be secure. Um, that's okay for the typical user, but when you get into uh, a Linux system administration environment where you're having to make that connection to the remote server multiple times during the day, then that becomes an administrative burden uh, and ti very time consuming. And so what I want to do is show you a way to get around the password requirement uh, and use a key pair that we're going to generate here on the local machine, uh, public-private key pair uh, with RSA encryption, and then you'll be able to connect to that remote server to administer that server as if you were sitting in front of it. Uh, over the network, the difference being you'll have a secure shell connection, a tunnel, if you will, uh, so that eavesdropping on the traffic to and from the lo remote uh, the local machine rather to the remote server isn't possible. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and get in the terminal here. Let me fire the terminal up. Here we are in the terminal now on my local machine. Uh, let me get the IP address for this machine, and you can see the IP address is 192.168.136. Okay, the machine that we're going to be connecting to is another Linux box running the SSH protocol uh, at 192.168.1.85. Right. Um, I will say before we move on that I'm talking about SSH protocol here, but actually in the modern day Linux distro we're, we're really talking about open SSH. It's been replaced. The old SSH protocol has been replaced with the open source version. Uh, so when I reference SSH I'm really talking open SSH. All right, so let me go ahead and clear the screen here. Now let's go ahead and ping that server to make sure we have connectivity. So I'm going to use ping that C switch three. So I'm going to send three packets to that server, and the address is 192.168.1.85. And so I'm sending three packets of 64 bytes. Uh, we've got three packets transmitted, three received, zero percent loss, uh, and 100 percent received. So We've got good connections. We've got a good route to that server, so now we can use SSH uh, and not have to be concerned about it. So let's clear the screen again. All right. So the first thing I want to do is make my initial connection with a password requirement from the local machine to the remote remote server. And to do that, I'm going to use the SSH protocol command in Linux, uh, and then I'm going to use the the username of the account on that server that I am uh, have the password for. So that is data pioneer as well at 192.168.1.85. Alright, the first time I make that connection it warns me. It says the authenticity of the host can't be established. There's a ECDSA key fingerprint with a SHA, SHA-256 hash has been created. Uh, says, uh, do I want to make the connection anyway? I'm going to say yes. And then it tells me that as a result of that, it's permanently added that hashed uh, fingerprint to the known host file on my local computer. Okay. And so I'm waiting for it to come back to a prompt here for me. And it should be, if I don't get it, I'm going to okay, cancel that clear the screen. So if I do a CD into the .ssh directory on my local machine and take a look at that, um, the known host file that it copied that hash to is 
this one right here and it's located under the home directory in a hidden directory called SSH where the, hence the dot in front of it and notice it's not empty it's got something in it which is the hash hopefully and so let's do a more on the known host file take a look at it and this is the hash that was created this is what allowed me to make that initial connection to the server um, which I'm going to have to do again because I broke it when I hit, did a control C alright so let me go ahead and clear the screen let me do an SSH again uh, to data pioneer at 192.168.1.85 and it's asking me for that password again so I'm going to put that in and I put the right password in it connects me so I made, made the connection and the way it made this connection was it looked at the known host file on this machine looked to see if there was a hash that uh, would secure the connection it found it in the known host file that I just showed you and so it allowed the connection to take place and so the connection is there I'm now looking at the machine uh, remotely uh, which is the data pioneer at pop OS desktop okay which is the remote server running uh, pop OS Linux which is an Ubuntu uh, distro as well I can come in here and do a CD of the desktop to show you that I'm looking now uh, at the desktop itself in the terminal and so this is the contents of the desktop remote server not my local machine and traffic to and from uh, this machine to the remote server now is um, secure so I can make you know configuration changes add files uh, mon you know uh, modify files etc on that server uh, over this connection all day long and uh, if anybody tries to capture packets they're not going to be able to read them because they're not plain text they're encrypted all right that's all well and good like I said for the typical user but uh, we're going to need to improve upon that and so uh, before I get out of this connection to the remote server let me change the directory to the .ssh directory here and show you that what we have is nothing but a known host file it's empty uh, on this remote server which means this remote server has never had an SSH connection made from it to something else we've had one going to it but not from it and so there's no known hosts in this particular file alright so let me go ahead and exit now let me get I'm back at my local machine let me go ahead and clear the screen so I'm back at uh, data pioneer at my local machine data pioneer dot dash kde neon alright in order to uh, bypass the password requirement uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a key pair, a public and private key pair using RSA encryption 2048 bit and to do that I'm going to use a command key uh, SSH key gen uh, let me make sure that's the right command um, nope SSH dash keygen, uh, which is the generator. Use the T switch using RSA encryption, that's the type, and then the bit strength is 2048 bit. And so this is the command SSH dash keygen, type RSA bit strength 2048. I'm going to hit the enter key. It says it's generating the public private RSA key pair. Wants to know where I want to save it. Well, I'm going to save it in the default location which is in the subdirectory .ssh of the home directory in that file which is the private key so I'm going to hit the enter key it's asking me for a passphrase now you don't have to put one in you can leave it empty highly recommend you do create a passphrase and uh, <coughs> the reason for that is if you don't create a passphrase uh, somebody can capture your private key and use it all day long to match it to the public key on the server that we're going to copy up here in a moment and get in without a passphrase requirement okay so let's go ahead and put in a passphrase and re-enter it alright and it generated the key and so we're looking at this is the fingerprint of that key right here with a hash of SSA SHA256 with an RSA encryption of 2048 bit 
okay and this right here is a random art image of that particular key so we've created that key pair uh, if I take a look at the key pair I'm on my local machine so let's uh, do a listing rather where I'm in already in the dot SSH directory where I saved it you'll notice that along with the known host file we use the password requirement we now have two um, files here additionally one's called ID underscore RSA that's the private key and then the ID underscore RSA dot pub is the public key okay uh, so both of those are on my local machine all right the next step in the process is is I need to let me go ahead and clear the screen uh, well wait a minute I forgot to do something real quick I want to look at the actual private key or the public key rather so I want to do a more on the ID underscore RSA dot pub okay and this is what the key looks like all right and uh, I want to bring that to your attention because we're going to be comparing that key here in a moment when we copy it up to the server so I'm going to leave it up right now on the screen um, okay so what we need to do is we need to copy only the public key up to the remote server. We don't want to copy the pi private key. And we could do this manually uh, and create that file on the remote server and uh, load the contents into it, but there's a better way of doing it. There's a command you can use called SSH copy um, ID and the IP address uh, where you want to copy it, 192.168.1.85 what that does is it's prompting me now for the password of Data Pioneer. And when I enter the password correctly, it adds one key to the server. It says right here, keys added, one. Okay. Uh, it wants me to go ahead and log in again to that server using that SSH without the Data Pioneer in front of it to make sure that the key that was copied up is a one and only key that I want copied which is the public key not the private key and so I'm going to go ahead and put in SSH get rid of that SSH 192.168.1.85 and it's uh, going to take a few seconds here Um, no route to host, so something something happened to the route. Let me go ahead and ping it again. Make sure it's still good. It's still good, so I need to refresh the, the route. Uh, so let's do an SSH 192.168.1.85 again. And it's asking me for the passphrase for the key. And let me put that in. and um, I entered the correct passphrase and so it connected me so I'm now connected uh, to that remote server which is pop OS desktop okay and I used the uh, passphrase this time instead of the password to get into in there the reason I was able to do that is, well, I will show you right now so let me do a CD uh, to the um, SSH directory here on the remote server and we run a listing on that and you can see there's now a file that wasn't there before called authorized keys okay it's not empty uh, hopefully it has the public key in it okay we copied up using the SSH copy ID command and so let's take a look at that more on authorized oops, two Z's no keys okay and this is the, the um, key that was copied up okay, it's the contents of the key that we're looking at uh, and this should be the public key so notice it got has four A's B three N so let's go up the screen which is uh, where I had left the key contents for the public key down on the local machine and it, it's identical four A's B three N so this is the public key here that was on the local device local platform Here's now the key that was copied up to the server. They match. 
and so it is the only key, one key was copied, and it was placed automatically in a file that it creates on the fly called authorize underscore keys. Okay? So that way, when I uh, log in uh, with SSH from the local machine to the server now, uh, it looks at the authorized keys file, it takes the public key and matches it against the public key that corresponds to the private key on my local machine at 192.168.1.36 and if they match it lets me in if I enter the correct passphrase. Okay? That's all well and good again but then what we've done basically here is we've replaced the requirement to enter a password with the requirement to enter a passphrase and that's still not going to be good enough because it's still an administrative burden. So let me go ahead and uh, exit the server, get back to the local machine, let me clear the screen again. And now what I'm going to show you is a way to get around entering a password or a passphrase. And that is uh, by um, taking an agent called an SSH agent and opening the agent, setting the variables within the agent and copying them into random access memory on the machine. Uh, and leaving them there so that we we'll allow the SSH agent to make the connection for us so that we don't have to enter a password or passphrase. All right. And so the process to do that is pretty straightforward. Uh, the first thing we need to do is invoke the agent. And so what I'm going to do is, when I'm on my local machine, SSH agent is the command. Uh, and what the two variables that I spoke of earlier SSH underscore auth underscore sock right up here uh, and SSH agent uh, PID okay are here and they are uh, currently unset okay alright so uh, what I need to do now is I need to copy those up to um, the memory location now I could do this uh, you know, manually by stopping the SSH SSH agent using a command called SSH agent K for kill. Could do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just uh, show you that there is another command that I can use to do that for me, which is called the eval. And then I'm going to have space, but I'm going to use the back um, quote uh, single quote not the uh, regular single quote, but the back single quote, which is uh, the lowercase tilde key, key on your keyboard, and then use the SSH um, let's see here yeah, SSH agent and back tilde. What that does is the things that are the thing is that, it, that is in the back tilde or back quote, single quote, with the eval command, what it does is it takes that and evaluates that uh, and processes that rather than treating it as text. Okay, And so I hit enter, and it tells me that the agent PID is 3515. All right, So that has copied that up to memory. Now, I want to take and unlock the private key on the host and add it to the agent. In order to do that, I'm going to run the command SSH add hit enter. It's asking me for the passphrase to the private key on the local machine. That's the same passphrase we used on the remote machine. Make sure I enter it right. Okay. It says identity has been added. So now I've added the identity uh, to the uh, SSH agent. Okay. So the agent now is going to work for us to make the connection uh, as opposed to um, us having to do it with a password or a passphrase. All right, so let me clear the screen. I'm still on the local machine. And now what I'm going to do is show you that I make the connection. The agent's going to jump in the middle between me and the SSH connection to the remote server. And it's going to make the connection for me and so I won't be prompted for a password or a passphrase. So let's do SSH 192.168.1.85 and I'm connected. So uh, the agent stepped in for me and assisted by taking the private key that I added in memory 
and uh, made the connection for me and I, I wasn't prompted for anything. Uh, it just supplied what the server needed on the other end, that the remote connection, uh, to, uh, to make that connection. All right. Now, one of the things you need to keep in mind is you need to keep the terminal open at all times. You can, you know, minimize it or whatever you want to do, uh, and then you can just, you know, reopen it as needed um, to make that connection if you break it. In other words, I can exit this uh, connection right now and uh, and then come back in again by running this SSH 192.168.185 again if I want to. Um, and that's not a problem. It's when I close the terminal, close the terminal session, where I'll run into an issue. Uh, and what I'll need to do at that point is I'll need to run the eval statement again. Uh, so I just broke the connection to show you, okay? And so I'm back at the local machine again. So if I do an SSH 192.168.1.85, it made that connection to the server again, no problem, okay? Let's go ahead and exit the connection again, and now I'm going to exit the terminal altogether and show you now that the session's been broken. If I come back in here um, and try to make that connection again, uh, it's going to prompt me for the passphrase all right, because it's now dropped out of memory. The SSH agent doesn't know what the private key is anymore since I've closed the terminal session. So let me do an SSH 192.168.1.85 and show you it's asking me for the passphrase. Let me just go ahead and enter it. I made my connection there, okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and break the connection. Get back to the machine, local machine. Now I'm going to run that eval statement again, invoking the agent once again. There's the new PID, 3558. Now I'm going to do an SSH add. Here's the passphrase. On the local machine, now it's, the private key's been added back in memory again so that the, uh, with the agent, so the agent has it. All right, and so now if I clear the screen, I'm still on my local box. I do an SSH 192.168.185. Now it's made the connection for me, or should. It's going to take a few seconds here. Um, seems to be having a problem with this um, route 192.168.185 today for some reason. There we go. All right, so I'm now reconnected to the server uh, again. And let's take a look at um, let's do a listing rather. Uh, the location there with the authorized keys and the authorized keys hasn't changed or anything like that. Notice the known host file was not in play at all on the remote server. Okay, okay. so let me go ahead and get out of it. This has been a, a video to demonstrate uh, secure shell connectivity using a public-private key pair in Linux and then invoking the SSH agent to assist in making the connection without having to use a password or passphrase so if you were a Linux admin, um, you could make that connection all day long just by typing in SSH and the IP address of the server you want to connect to, and bingo, you're in. Have a nice day.